Hey guys, Sandy here. Uh, my challenge for this week was to compare and contrast a book to movie adaptation that was not Harry Potter. I'm going to try and do this as close to one take as I possibly can and as few takes as possible only because uh, my fiance came in this weekend and I promised I would spend time with him after I got home from work and it's just been a crazy couple of days. He has been begging me to play cards so um, he's kind of peeved at me right now that I'm doing this instead. <laughs> so I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible. I had several different books that I wanted to do. I had a list of several different ones, um, including Lord of the Rings, The Help, Pelican Brief. I think I had Midsummer Night's Dream in there too. Um, I chose Lord of the Rings. So the first thing I want to talk about made me actually really happy. Before the hobbits reach Bree, they go through uh, the old forest and they meet up with Tom Bombadil and that entire section was completely left out in the movies and I was so happy that they left that out because personally I thought that was the most boring part of the entire series. Tom Bombadil, like I understand why it's important in the books, he was the only person in the entire series of novels who was able to completely resist the power of the of the ring. Um, but it was just, it was boring, and it wasn't necessary to the larger storyline. Something that made me really annoyed about the series of movies is Arwen. Arwen had, was mentioned like three times. She only had one line in the entire series, and that was in the third book. The only reason she had a bigger part in the movies was, one, because they wanted to have an element of a love story that would make the series of movies more attractive to a larger female audience because frankly the entire series people who are going to be into the Lord of Rings let's be honest we're nerds and that's okay but that's basically the demographic that you're talking to and second reason that they made it they expanded that part was because Liv Tyler literally begged the writers and producers and directors for a larger part which was cool like I said she did a good job but it kind of annoys me because it wasn't there in the books. Absolute biggest thing that made me mad about the series. The encounter with Shelob, the big giant spider, that was done like completely wrong. There are at least six things that were done completely wrong in the movies that but they were important. And it didn't make sense to have them do it the way they did on film when it, the things that were done in the book made so much more sense. Uh, first of all, looking at it as a whole, it was actually supposed to take place at the end of the two tower or the two towers, and it didn't. They moved it. They moved it into the Return of the King. First of all, Sam and Frodo were never separated in the books. They went through the entire encounter together. He, Frodo, never asked Sam to return to the Shire. He never told him to go home. Secondly, the cave was supposed to be pitch black. Okay, the, the hobbits were supposed to find their way through by feeling along the walls and having that guide them through the cave. Thirdly, the webs, Shelob's webs, Frodo was supposed to bounce off of those. They made them like sticky in the movies and he was like helplessly all in the web and somehow managed to cut his way free. Complete baloney. Never happened. He was supposed to bounce off. Fourth of all, Frodo actually went on the offensive against Shelob. In the movies, they made this whole big thing about, oh, he, it was so hard to fight against her. I'll use the little light from the star, and I'll chase her away, and, you know, I'll make a few stabs and kind of fend her off. No, he actually went on the offensive against her and, like, really tried to kill her. And then, also... Because Sam was actually with Frodo in the books, Sam was able to warn Frodo about Shelob coming out of the lair afterwards, after they got out, and, you know, Shelob was coming to stab Frodo. Sam actually warned Frodo about that. And in the movies, since Sam wasn't there, nobody warned Frodo and he got stabbed. Now, he did get stabbed in the books, too, but he was stabbed in the neck, not in the stomach. It never should have happened that he was stabbed in the stomach, like in the movies. Because he was wearing Mithril. He was wearing the chainmail. The stab should never have gotten through the chainmail. And in the movie, somehow, it did. After they made this huge deal about it being tough as dragon scales and really, really tough, not everything, nothing being able to break through it, and yet Shelob Stinger suddenly somehow does, it makes absolutely no sense. He was stabbed in the neck, and that's how he was poisoned and almost died. 
So that's my discussion about Lord of the Rings. I wish they had done a few things very differently. For the most part, I really enjoyed the movies. And actually, I am totally excited they're now making The Hobbit, which is supposed to come out next year. I'll put a link to the trailer down below in the doobly-doo. As for my challenge, I'm going to challenge Sparks. Uh, you haven't done a video in a while because we've added some new people to our rotation. I want you to do a video about your viewpoint on the death penalty and capital punishment. So that is your challenge for next time. And uh, until you see me again, this is Sandy signing off. See you guys later.